welcome back to AR77. It's been a while since I made a video, so I'm pleased to be back with you again, making another one for you. Uh, and for me, let's be honest, I do enjoy it. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm especially pleased that today's video features yet another 1911 style pistol to add to the ever-growing collection. This is the Sig Sauer 1911 Emperor Scorpion. This is a CO2 powered 4.5 millimeter steel BB firing replica air pistol. Uh, 4.5 millimeters or 0.177 caliber, if you will. Doesn't shoot pellets, only shoots BBs. Uh, it is almost an exact replica of the real steel Emperor Scorpion. In fact, let me just move that a touch over there and I'll throw up an image of the real steel just so you can get an idea of exactly how close it is, uh, certainly in looks and, and indeed in function as well. Finished in a lovely flat dark earth um, paint job and I think that contrasts really well with the black, the, the, the black on the, on the grips and the details, all your working parts there. And all of these parts are working uh, with the exception of perhaps the, uh, the extractor there, the external extractor on this one because it's a modern SIG. 1911, I know that might divide opinion. Some people would say, well, it's not a, not a 1911 because it's got an external extractor. Um, real or otherwise, I'll leave you to that conversation. This is a, a lovely version, a lovely modern replica of a thoroughly modern 1911 style pistol by SIG. Carries 16 rounds in the full-size metal dropout magazine. Um, and on the subject of metal, this is pretty much all metal. I would say that everything on this pistol, other than perhaps the grips there, is, is metal. Uh, and this little bit at the bottom of the magazine, which I'll talk about shortly. The way that it comes is, if you've got, ever had a SIG pistol before, air pistol, you'll notice that they come in a kind of a cardboard box with the uh, the traditional kind of yellow, black and white packaging. And there'll be a window in the front of the box so you can see your pistol when it's hanging up in a shop or whatever. Uh, that was certainly true of the M17, of the P365, of the 1911 We The People. But this one, they've changed it a little bit. It comes in a more traditional, uh, just cardboard box. That's actually what I'm more used to in terms of get, getting air pistols. Uh, I'm used to them coming in a box like that. And I, I I prefer that, I think. I think it feels a bit less flimsy. There's less plastic being used. And actually, it's it's smaller, so it's easier to stow if you're going to keep them in the box. A bit of information on the back of there as well. Nice bit of information about the pistol. CO2, 4.5 millimeter, 16 rounds, uh, 4.3 inch barrel, fully blowback. Fully blowback, I say that because some pistols aren't. Some pistols blow back a little bit. Uh, but when they lock back, they don't lock back in the full sort of rear position. This one will do. Overall length, 8.7 inches, semi-automatic, 2.1 pounds in weight and muscle velocity of up to 300 feet per second. So that's probably a movable feast. It might shoot up to 310, 320 on a good day. It might shoot as low as 280 on a bad day. Um, I don't know. I don't have a crony. And for anybody who's um, upset about that, I, I apologise profusely. But I'm personally not particularly focused on feet per second with these kinds of pistols. I know it will contribute to your accuracy, you might say. Um, but if, if it's accuracy you're after, if it's power you're after, here's a tip. Don't buy a blowback pistol for a start. If you want accuracy, don't buy a BB pistol. Get yourself a non-blowback pellet pistol of a reasonable power. These are for plinking in the back garden. And as I, you know, with that in mind... You, then I would say that these, these are more than more than capable of, I've said it a million times, putting holes in a can or putting holes in a piece of paper or knocking over toy soldiers, whatever you're shooting at in your back garden, these are more than capable and a whole lot of fun. So, yeah, I, I can't give you a foot, foot per second count on it. Uh, and I, you know, it's not the most accurate air pistol in the world, but it's good enough. Good enough. Um... Now, it doesn't say anything on it. It doesn't say anywhere on it that it's made by KWC, but I'm pretty sure that it is for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it just feels like the quality of my other KWC pistols. Um, I have two more on the table today. I've got this other one, which is, again, a SIG. Uh, this is the 1776 We The People edition. Really lovely pistol. Shares a lot of similarities with the Empress Scorpion here and probably shares a number of parts that are that are the same. Uh, I also have my Swiss Arms uh, tactical rail system, 911 there, the 
1911, not 911, uh, the TRS, um, feels very similar, similar weight, uh, similar kind of noises, you know, when it's functioning. Uh, also, if I show you the, if I show you the mag, apart from that kind of faux extension there on the bottom of the mag, it's identical, really, to the, the TRS magazine. And actually, you can take any KWC magazine and pop it in there, and it'll work just fine. Looks a bit daft, but it'll work. So that's the good thing about having a number of these, is the more pistols you buy, the more magazines, <laughs> magazines you've got. Um, probably not the cheapest way of doing it. You could just buy spare magazines, but hey-ho. Um, Right, let's take a bit of a walk around, shall we? And I'll show you what is nice and what I like about this pistol. Um, starting at the top here, we've got some really nice uh, sights there. White dot front and rear, pretty pretty broad there. Um, but the sight picture is quite nice and tight at the front. Um, you've got this lovely kind of etched detailing here, Sig Sauer, 1911. I like that a lot. Uh, I like these front and rear uh, cocking serrations there definitely do the job um yeah quite nice and broad as they tend to be these days similar in some ways to the trs let me just show you that again so we've got a similar sort of system here but they go top to bottom really on the slide there sort of that top portion of the slide whereas on the sig they're a bit more subtle they don't they don't just go just as high and i think i prefer that if i'm honest with you um yeah, nice recessed barrel at the front. Again, you've got this, you've got this kind of black uh, bushing here, and it's it's again a, a lovely contrast to that sort of flat, dark earth. Uh, you've got the almost kind of trademark uh, groove that kind of tells you it's a Sig Sauer as well. You know, if you if you look at a different nineteen eleven, it's just flat all the way along. Even with the serrations, it's still flat. Uh, or slab sides, as they call them. Uh, there's a bit of a groove in that, which is is from a long time ago on Sig Sauer's. They've always kind of had that. They've changed it more recently on the, the 320. It's a slightly different bit of styling, but yeah, I like that. It's a Sig um, note, if you will. Nice skeletonized trigger there. Um, you've also got your, your uh, rail on the front there, if you want to add torches, lasers. Uh, Grenade launchers, missile launchers, uh, maybe not the last two, but you know. Uh, you've got your skeletonized trigger there. Uh, working safety, so just safety works there. And as does the grip safety, can't pull the trigger unless the grip safe safety is uh, down and the slide safety is disengaged. So that's good, fully functioning, fully working. If I have one criticism of this pistol and... I'm hard pushed to find one, but if I had one, it would be the the um, a bit flimsy. The spring doesn't feel just strong enough in that grip safety. Um, I've not had a problem with it. It just see what I mean. It's got a bit of bounce to it. It feels a bit flimsy. If I compare that to the uh, We the People, um, again a KWC gun released by Sig, but it's just got a bit of a, a better spring in the in the grip safety there. It's not a deal breaker. Um, it still works, as I showed you. You know, it's not. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. I guess the spring is adequate, but that would be the, my only criticism. I think really. Um, moving around, I mean, you've got this lovely Sig plastic Sig grip, but it's got that kind of honeycomb pattern there. I think that's a really lovely touch. I think it's nice that it comes around and it's kind of continued onto your main spring housing here. Uh, and then round onto the other side. Obviously, you've got some quite aggressive checkering here at the front of the uh, at the front of the grip. So that that pistol isn't going anywhere in your hand. It feels really good. It feels really stable in there. Likewise, on the trigger itself, you've got some really quite sharp um, grooves there, so that your fingers your fingers not going to slip off that. Even if it was wet, even if you just had bare hands, your finger isn't going anywhere um, off there. So that's you know some some nice detail there. You've got kind of a flared magwell here at the bottom, uh, true to form, which is kind of reminiscent in a way of the uh, the uh, Spartan. Let me show you that as well. Again, you've got we've got the Sig Spartan here, and it's kind of uh, the the grip extends beyond the sort of bottom of the grip into the sort of magwell. It looks like you've got a, an extended magazine as well, similar to the uh, 
this is off the Emperor Scorpion, but obviously with the uh, with the Spartan, uh, it's just a plastic dropout magazine like that. Uh, I'm not sure who makes these, but it's the same. It's the same as the um, Max Michel as well. It's pretty much the same pistol. Um, nice gun, nice gun. But this is one of the ones that you know after your last shot, it kind of locks back there, uh, which isn't the full the full stretch, if you will, as opposed to the Emperor Scorpion that after your last shot will fully lock back there. Lovely exposed kind of black uh, outer barrel there, if you will, and you can see all the way through your pistol there. I think that's a nice touch. Um, fully filled strippable. Um, you can take this down just like you would a regular 1911. Just roll your uh, roll your slide back to that notch there. Push out your catch and the slide will come off. Uh, I'm not going to take it down. I've done that a million times on other videos. Um, that's probably exa an exaggeration. I've done it a few times on other videos. Um, what else? Some details on this side. Yeah, you've got your, again, your extractor there. Uh, Sig Sauer Inc. Exeter NH. I think that's, I believe that's New Hampshire, the manufacturing plant in the States. Hello to any um, of my American friends. Got the F there for the German market. Some serial number there. Uh, some more writing underneath near the, near the kind of the, uh, the rail. Uh, you've got your calibre information there, if that'll focus for me. 0.177, 4.5mm. And what does this say here? It's giving me a, giving me a migraine, it won't focus. Warning, not a toy. Yeah, so a bit of safety, a bit of warning information there. Again, it says, made in Taiwan. Uh, and that's where KWC make theirs. So, yeah, I think it might be, be one of them KWC bad boys. In fact, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure that it is. Um, what else did I have written down for you? Oh yeah, I was going to talk to you about the magazine. Um, one thing that I do like that SIG have kind of, I don't know if it's their idea or if it's just the way that, that KWC have started to manufacture the pistols now. If you look at the grip, the the magazine rather, for the, the TRS, this is identical to the one other than the silver colour. This is identical to the, the magazine that you'll get in your Tanfoglio Witness, your Remington 1911 RAC. It's, it's exactly the same. And what you'd have to do is pull the follower back and kind of just hold it a little bit further back uh, where where the, 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 are, the opening kind of widens here. You'd hold it a little bit further back and you can drop your BBs in while you hold it and then you can release it. In the We The People magazine, they put in this little hole here, which is obviously just over 4.5 millimetres. Uh, so the follower will, will hold back here. You don't have to hold on to it, it'll lock back. And you can drop your, your BBs in through that hole and then push your follower down and it'll it'll release and hold them in place. And they've continued that with the Emperor Scorpion. So I'm really pleased to see that. I think it's just, it's a tiny little detail, but I think it's, uh, I think it's a good detail. Um, yeah. A uh, bit of a comparison then to, I guess, its closest stable mate, which would probably be, hmm, probably the We The People uh, 1911. I think they share the same uh, sights. I think you could say they share the same hammer, safety, um, trigger, um, both accurate in terms of replica features. You know, that's what the real steel looks like um pretty similar although with the with the people it's kind of a it's a kind of a fusion between the old and the new obviously you've got the slide serrations which are which are broad serrations there which is a newer feature obviously more modern sights and skeletonized trigger and hammer and so on and so forth and yet at the front of the pistol it very very much feels like a more traditional 1911 with that kind of those smooth flat sides um, no serrations at the front there, no no rail or anything like that, and that's that's what I really like about the seventeen seventy six. It's it's like uh, it feels like a really traditional like nineteen eleven, but with all the benefits of the more modern take on the pistol. Um, this is a thoroughly modern one um, from the flared magwell to the to the skeletonized trigger and grip and the cocking serrations front and rear there. So in, in a way, it's it's more similar to other modern nineteen elevens that Sig have made, like. The Spartan, uh, this is the Mark One Spartan. Um, the, I don't think they do a, an air pistol version in four point five millimeters uh, BBs uh, of the of the Mark Two Spartan. Uh, this isn't made by KWC. I'm not sure who makes these. It's got a weird little button there on the 
on the uh, slide safety that you have to push down to disengage the safety, which I um, don't really see the point of. But yeah, that's more modern. It's similar kind of slide, similar shape to the slide, almost identical shape, really, the slides on those two. Um, more you know, similarities around the, the shape of the, the rail underneath as well. Um, very similar. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the real steel version is just a kind of a, a reskinned version of the of the Spartan. Although I, I don't know the real steel firearms, there might be all sorts of things going on internally that make it a very different piece. Um, look, compare that to the TRS. It's got, got, you know, it's got a different kind of different shape to the front there. Obviously, this isn't based on a on a Sig Sauer. This is based, I believe, on the Kimber Warrior. Um, shaping just from the front of that that looks like a kimber to me i think that's about it um so in summary if you have a, a 1911 style replica air pistol made by kwc it will do everything that this does it will fully blow back it will field strip it will be fully metal where it should be other than perhaps the grips it'll have the same magazine and so on and so forth. You know, early versions, the, the, the 1911 RAC by Remington, still a KWC pistol, that won't have the the uh, rail at the front because it's it's a replica of the of the A1, a more, you know, a more historical pistol. But it will be essentially the same, other than some cosmetic details. So if you've already got a KWC 1911, you don't need this one. Having said that, I've got maybe three or four KWC 1911s, and I still really wanted this one because this is such an exact replica. You know, similar in so, so many ways to the to the We The People, it's so close to the real steel. I just had to have it in the collection. It's another 1911, and I've been looking for one that was in a kind of a tan or a coyote brown or a flat dark earth finish, and this, this was released, and it really just fit the bill for me. This is quickly becoming my favorite pistol. I, I really love this. I love the finish. I love the way it works, obviously, because it's, it's tried and tested in terms of functionality. It works really well. It's not the most accurate pistol. It's not the most powerful pistol. But in terms of fun, I don't think you can do an, an awful lot better with any, any other replica air pistol. So no, you don't need it, but you might really, really want one of these. And I, I would not hesitate in recommending this to anyone, especially a 1911 fan or collector. It's a really nice pistol. It's a really modern pistol. And for those of you out there who have, you know, who have the, the real steel, you might have the Emperor Scorpion in, in 45 ACP, uh, you know, obviously perhaps not in, in this country, but elsewhere, and certainly in the States, this is a really close replica. If you just want to save some money on ammunition, if you just want to practice things like your muscle memory, um, drawing from holster, that sort of thing, site acquisition, all of that stuff. Um, it's a far, far um, less expensive way of practicing, practicing field stripping, that sort of thing. So while I don't have experience of the real steel, I'm, I'm, I'm sure this would be a useful tool for you to have. Um, other than that, as I said before, great fun, lovely looking pistol, and I highly recommend the 1911 Emperor Scorpion by Sig Sauer. Once again, thanks for joining me. Please take care, stay safe, all the very best. Bye.